Hey everybody, I'm TJ Majors. It's part of the six cup car this weekend. Had the 41 truck, no Xfinity. I was too tired. <laughs> too tired. Brett Griffin, man, I'm speaking of tired. Are you uh, tired? I, I, I'm back in the saddle, spotted for Austin Hill yesterday. For 30 And laps. I just landed from uh, <laughs> Texas. I got, I was, what's up, Freddie Krabs, bottom of Wallace, <laughs> Kyle Sieg, and uh, Ty Dillon. I was landing at about 10 30, 10 40, and Brett had just to text that he was taking off at about, mm. I don't know, 10 o'clock, 9 30. <laughs> no, it, it was late. It was ridiculous. Why so late? We waited on two <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> Did they would show you, up showered and full bellies? I you? mean, I hope they went to In and Out, Bucky's, and the strip club. I hope they went everywhere <laughs> they wanted to go before they got to the airport. Hard eight. Wherever. Uh, yeah. I, do we know these people? Or do I don't know. Uh, no. That'd be funny if we did. So, just two well, guys. Well, well, were they, what were they, crew guys? or like They had on Hooters up? gear, so I don't know if they were servers at Hooters or... Or if they actually were on a nine would team, you, or would I you have know. preferred they just left them? I'd have preferred they, yeah, I, I would a hundred percent preferred they left them. I remember one year, let them ride the truck home. I remember one year Joey won uh, uh, five hundred, and Mike Messick was on our plane, oh. and we <laughs> had to wait forever. I mean, it wasn't yeah. Mike's fault. He's doing engine. Mike works uh, one of the, the main guys in yeah. the Yates. Uh, he. He had to do engine tear down, and whew, we were there for a while. Surely they could have swapped him. <laughs> That's what I'm sitting there. I, think, sure. I honestly think yeah. eventually they did. I think that we ended up leaving, but we waited. But here, a long here time. I'm looking at two Hendrick jets across the runway from me, and I understand why they've not taken off. But I also understand that there's three teams over there. Go get two people off that plane, put them on this plane, and send my plane home. But math is hard for some people. Well, well I know. I don't think it's just math. You're literally complaining but. about flying private. I know. Try flying That's because the commercial flight race. beat me home. The commercial flight landed before my flight landed. <laughs> How'd you get home, Casey? Travels one race, and he has so much to complain about. Oh. <clears throat> How'd you get, when did you get home? Uh, I did not go to Texas okay, this good. weekend. Probably, probably, you know. What's your next one? Dover. <clears throat> oh. Dover. Yep. Dover. Oh, Dover. We got some cool stuff coming up. We Dover. do have some we cool do. stuff coming up. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> Chase Elliott. All is right in the world, right? Gets his win, breaking his 42 race winless streak. What do you guys think of the race? All hell, Chase Elliott. Keep the kingdom is correct again. All is right in the world. <laughs> yeah. I laughed above his tweet last night. I was like, damn it, now we're never going to get to fix Texas because Ch- Chase won here. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a yeah. funny tweet. Um, I, listen, I don't the know. The king has been resurrected. Yeah. Chase Elliott is alive. Yeah. I mean, listen, for what I couldn't believe, I was listening to Teardown, and I actually had a text. We, uh, we've we been texting with uh, Trey Ryan about some uh, stats back and forth, and I couldn't believe to find out that this was Chase's first top five in the next-gen car in, on mile and a half. Um, ex- I guess excluding, I didn't know that. excluding Atlanta. But, I mean, it's hard to believe. You know what I mean? It's just as, I mean, as good and consistent as he normally is, you would, you'd feel like that, that he's at least found one somewhere. But I don't know how many races it is, but uh, – that <clears throat> was, was a surprising stat for me, for sure. I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I didn't believe it, to be honest. <laughs> I, I would. I didn't either. It's hard to be that bad. <laughs> I, said, I, I, I hate to kick a horse while they're down, but uh, the I, 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 we text Trey because Fox was the one that shared it, I guess, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to fact check these guys after yeah. some of the graphics they put up the last few I, Man, it's so cool for him to win, though, honestly. Um, big win for Hooters. First win since 1992. Obviously, been supporting our sport for a long time. I was time. ten years old in '92. Yeah, I was a junior in high school. <laughs> I so, like a complete idiot. So, what about that Hooters curse? Is it safe to say it's safe to say it's over? To? I guess. Yeah, I don't, it's. I didn't even know there was a Hooters curse. I never. I thought didn't about either. It. Is it? I mean, it's not like how many? But I mean, how many? They, I don't really think it's a curse. Quickie. There were some other guys that uh, who were they after? Who were they on after Kawiki? Like I remember Loy Allen, Loy Allen, Allen, Allen Jr. Yeah, they weren't going to win. He wasn't going to win. <laughs> no, no. But you would have thought when they got with a Georgia boy, and obviously Hooters started in Georgia. Yeah. But didn't they kind of um, disappear for a while? They did. They went away. So is it really a they, curse? They started I mean, their own deal, didn't they? Like they, the, that Hooters Pro Cup deal was pretty cool for a while. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a curse. I don't either. So y'all didn't tell me going into Texas how hard it was going to be to pass. <laughs> Holy hard to pass. That's what I, you know, I, I is this s- your first top five, Brett? I, I hadn't <laughs> spotted in six months, TJ. So I was out of cadence. I was out of shape. And I get up there and I'm like, this is awful. Well, you aren't out there very long, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, hey, I was running second when my <laughs> <laughs> broke. You know, because why? everyone's hard to pass. That's because everyone pitted. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, 
I saw people, and I'm sure we'll get into this more later, but you know that that race, and it's trending pretty good on Glux Poll. It's 74 percent. When I just, oh, wow, I'm really well, surprised on that I, one. When I just voted no, it was it was trending 74. percent Did you vote no? Yeah. You what if, always vote no. No, what if Denny, I do, and I think it's a bad race. What if Denny won? Where's that poll? At? Oh, for me, it was definitely yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where, what do you think no. the percentage is? Yeah, I mean, I, I Chase is probably worth I don't know five points, maybe. Oh, I think it's oh, more than uh, that. Way more. Than that. Here, it's way. I, I think more it was that. gonna be over seventy either way. I think it was probably entertaining to watch. I, I feel well, like the, they were the race themselves. was entertaining. It wasn't a good race, that, and that's in my opinion. You know, it was just. It was it was cautions. So cautions bring restarts. Restarts are entertaining. So that's what makes but the people... cautions were actually natural cautions most of the time. So that was okay. Yeah, I mean, guys, we we have the drivers to thank for it being entertaining. Because if they're not out there on edge, if they had been patient, Denny could well, have easily been content outside of whoever the hell he wrecked racing. Ty, um, Chase. Yeah, I mean, there there were just so many. McDowell could have easily been patient trying to take the lead where he was at. Like everybody knew, I got to get all I can get right here. If I, if it it almost was like Talladega was ten years ago. If you got the lead, you had control of the race, and those guys were doing all they could to get control. But the 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 actual ability to pass was absolute garbage. It was a I mean, it was it was a joke. It and was, when you put on tires, it was almost a joke. Yeah, I mean, we were we almost started. We I mean, we were all ineffectively. We were running the race like a road course at the end of stage two. Like we were staying out. Like we stayed out. You know, we we fueled it up, and we could run to our window in the third stage, where we could make it to the end. And I think I think the twenty one was doing something similar. He was, but yeah. it's just. You know, it like that, we don't. Have, that's never unheard of in what we do. You know what I mean? Uh, we were just staying out on old tires, and we we finished second in the stage, and and stayed out again. And we're gonna try and run about twenty five. There was laps. a little bit of separation in tires, but it was still hard. Yeah, but and the, it, there was two. The groups were so big, though, like you couldn't get all the way back through them. It was. It was the my biggest problem with with it was it was so easy to just aero block. Like if you could if you could easy, stall though. a run. Then that guy wasn't getting around you for another five laps. I actually thought this was one of the harder places to aero block. It's way to me. It was harder than a Kansas or something like that because the cars would still um, get a little bit upset. And in three and four, if the guy ran the bottom, you would run the top and you could get a run. Like we had, like we we were we caught chase near the end there. We were probably Brad just got to him. Um, I think we probably could have got we were just creeping in him he it was just going to be a game when he chose the wrong line and then we were going to be beside him which was probably going to happen but it was going to take another four laps to get him then i don't know it had been close but denny i feel like the nine was better than denny when denny was leading but he was having to pay too much attention to us and he couldn't run his line to catch denny because he was having to play defense but we had 15 20 lap better tires too so yeah, which should have been able to just drive by him. I yeah, mean, but it's still harder than you a, should have been able to blow his doors off a twenty lap pressure. I mean, if you do that at the old Texas, you're going. I mean, well, yeah. it wouldn't even be a question. No, no, no. definitely could, hard to pass. Could you imagine if you'd have got to the airport last night, both of you, and you read on Twitter, Chase Elliott has failed tech. I mean, that's not. I don't ever imagine that because that that's never that's gonna never happen. gonna happen. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> the last time that happened, it ended up just being a money fine anyway. <laughs> I did. I did see that. I I'm guess NASCAR saying. was frustrated at Chase for not letting off the gas for that caution, and I was like, "Are they talking about Chase Elliott?" Is that <laughs> I it actually screwed me up because him and who I was you were you second at the time probably yeah. But then so, they put the twenty four back, and then they took then they put it like they changed it twice at the end. Like he wrecked, we passed him in the middle of the backstretch, and the caution came out. Um, in, in Ross or, or uh, uh, what's his name? T Chase was in the middle of three and four. We're, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, Just we're Chase we're entering that three, guy. and it it has been a while since since we passed the twenty four, and I don't know how they you go right back to put him back in front of you, and then oh well, we're gonna put you back in front of him now. Like why change it twice? Just change it once. Yeah, I don't. But. So was that the same caution that took forever that drivers complaining about? Because I I remember there was one that was quite there a was, bit longer. They were just getting There's, lined up. It's you right. know I don't yeah. It's not easy when you're we're all three wide through one and two, and then somebody wrecks over there on a restart. And now you're trying to pick out you know the scoring loops and who was involved and who wasn't. Like I know Noah benefited yeah. from the old don't stop keep going he i had looked up and they called the lineup out and we were they put us behind the 10 and i looked and the 10 was literally the last car in line and i was like 
how the hell is he up here in front of us if he's the last car in line? But they said he never never stopped for the wreck. He just kind of checked up behind it and then came through, which I you know I guess I'm fine with. But it's 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 better they take their time to get it right at that point. They have to. It, you have to because that's race changing. The, the time oh you weren't doing the Xfinity race when uh no was it the Xfinity race or no it was a truck race this year when yeah this year this week uh when the yellow came out when Zane was on pit road. That was a challenging one. Oh, yeah. We start, and we, he rolled it. We, yeah, he kept yeah. rolling, and like we didn't hear sh- for a little while because it was, yeah. okay, what's the rule? All right, now where are these guys at compared to these guys? And it was, there was like both the spotters down. I forget. I think Weddle was the spotter official. He's like, yeah. uh, tower position of the 91. Tower position. There's like, uh, standby. <laughs> like we're trying to figure this out. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was, it, it throws you off. There's written rules about, you know, if the guy pits. And he beat you to the line, or is be, it start if, finish if line? Start is finish it road, out. but that he didn't pit. He he kept driving through, yes. so then that throws it off even a little bit more. So it was. But it I mean, was it, interesting. no matter. I don't think there's ever going to be a time where that is. The cosh comes out in the middle of a cycle like that. There's no. I don't think it'll ever be. Okay, this is running order. I mean, you got to go back and look because there's so many people. Like if somebody's on pit road, he's doing 55 mile an hour. You got guys doing 180 on the track that are passing him. So you got to go back and look. Yeah. So. It's, and it's and that's that that's uh, part of the reason sometimes why you don't see cautions during pit cycles when it's when it's possible or <laughs> probably should be <laughs> maybe. Uh, well, I know Brett, you've harped on this a few times now. Just the overall track experience being a struggle. You were finally back at the track for the first time in forever. Yep. What did you guys think of the full weekend? Um, I thought we had a good crowd yesterday. Uh, the weather was honestly great. Thank goodness for the breeze. I think it would have felt like 120 if we didn't have that breeze. Um, I mean, I'll go back to what I said. I mean, we're just we're not, we're not on track enough. Like I looked at the Kansas schedule because that's my next race, and the Cup cars hit the track for the first time on Saturday evening, and then you race Sunday, and then I went and looked at the Iowa track schedule, and it's a full three day weekend for Cup. And I think you know for the first ever Cup race at Iowa. That's more of what the fans deserve, and and obviously I was sold out. I saw online that tickets are going for up to six hundred bucks, yep. um, and that there's none available, obviously from the track. So uh, I, I'm a bigger fan of making us be a three day weekend for the Cup Series everywhere we go because a lot of our contingencies, uh, as far as attendance, they hang on camping, and people aren't going to come camp for one night. They're just not going to do it. We saw that at Bristol this year. You know, you, the campgrounds at Bristol were empty, and it was. With the same schedule, we got on track. I think at like four or five o'clock on Saturday, and then and they were on, you know then they were on the free for the race. So it's obviously I, I had a buddy that brought a camper up there, and I was like, "Why are you camping? Like you, we're not on track <laughs> at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're only really there for only need to be there for two days. I mean, e- even even our, I mean, listen, our two premier events from a fan experience standpoint, in my mind, have always been Speed Weeks at Daytona and then Speed Weeks in Charlotte because as a fan, you could come set up shop for one day or ten days in both of those markets and have an absolute blast. And that's all gone away too. So, I mean, we used to roll into town and be the biggest show on earth, kind of what Barnum and Bailey's Circus says, but we were literally it, and we've got to figure out how to get back to that. But, no, a shout-out to all the fans who came out to the Texas race because if I were a fan sitting in the stands having a cold beer – um, I would say that that was an entertaining race. And I think, again, we, we thank the drivers for that. I think the tire was garbage, and I think the racing was garbage. The ability to pass was garbage. But thankfully, the drivers stepped up and made it entertaining. <laughs> they stepped up by stepping on it. <laughs> they did. Well, you know, it, it, it's – and that you see what happens. It's hard to pass, right? So what's going on is guys are – guys know it's hard to pass, and they know that they can if they can aero block or, or chop your runoff. What would you do could, to Briscoe? They, they could, what do you call that? Uh, that was just us <laughs> probably paying him back for wrecking <laughs> us in turn one a little earlier. Um, he got in the back of us and knocked us up the racetrack. And I think Bubba was just committed to trying to you know beat him into the corner and lost it. But, um, you know, you see these guys. Like, there's multiple instances yesterday where a guy would chop somebody's nose off, and then that guy got wrecked. A priest, priest <laughs> flat out wrecked Blaney. Um, I don't know what play, I'm sure some Blaney did something to him to precede that. It was in, he uh, ran him up in three and four. Um, I, I don't see that sitting well with Ford Motor Company. To just yeah, I mean, I would imagine not. <laughs> a, you've not won a race yet, which we I'm sure can talk about later. B, he's your champion, and C, 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where Stuart Haas is in good graces with Ford anyway. And here <laughs> you go. Don't care. Here you go. Dump him. Maybe. Or well, I appreciate you probably care. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think you want to be. Ah. Is right, that well, why you tweeted I mean, you change your he vote on drivers being cut? No, that wasn't why. <laughs> he wasn't. He. He wasn't the only one, though. No. I mean, you saw. Uh, I think Ty and Ricky got into it. Ricky tried to. I think Ricky tried to wreck him and and missed. What, what and was Josh himself. Berry doing? I didn't see that one. I didn't see it either. I haven't <clears> seen that. Did one. Did you see that one? I I can't. It's like he was I, trying to wreck somebody and he missed and he just completely wrecked himself. That's kind of what Ricky did. It I mean, like it, but it, I, it, I thought it was something about what just the take air. Off? Yeah, it was. It was hard to even to. Josh, that one. it was the first one that Josh. <clears> it looked to me. Like the first one, I didn't see the second one when he actually wrecked. But I think he was by himself. The first one, I think you're talking about, looked to me like he was underneath them and then like made an aggressive move to the right, right before entry, and then tr- probably turned, you know, had a bunch I'm of wheel into about. it. Yeah, it just looked to me like he made a like an aggressive move right and you then tried to that. come back too fast. You well, can't do that. Yeah, I, that one baffled me. Um, but did you see the Ricky one? Like Ricky drives into one, I, looking to me, looked to me like he's just trying to get to the fifty fourth bumper end? towards the end, yeah, <clears throat> and ends up yeah. way up the racetrack and then spins out. So on that's the, the caution that really screwed me. From I was about, yeah, I was yeah. about to ask that Thanks. about the strategy. <laughs> that was like, yeah, once you get cycles on your tires, everything evens out. Like, but right. I think the the thing North noting for me here is, you know, obviously I haven't spotted these cars in a while. Um, we ran third from last for the entire first stage until pit stop started. When pit stop started, we stayed out. We ran long. That was our strategy. Great call by Keith Rodden. Caution comes out. Now we're running after this thing shakes out. We couldn't get fuel in the car. It was a cluster. But once we got back going, we we restarted about 15th, and we ran 15th to 16th. And then, obviously, stage ends, and it's like, man, we ran long. We don't have a ton of laps on our tires, probably 18 to 20 green flag laps. Let's just stay out. So we stay out, and we restart on the front row, and we run second with the same car that was running fourth from last, and Larson was just starting to catch us on brand-new tires, and obviously he was in a class of his own. I thought he was the fastest car, hands down, um, until he had his incident where the wheel fell off. But I was in a car running third from last for for 40 laps, and that same car was going to run top five as long as we wanted to until we pitted. Yeah, that's what I talked about that at like the Phoenix race. I felt like if you if you took our car, with, you know, with a crane and picked it up and wherever you put it down, that's where it would run. If it was fifth, it'd be fifth. Your if car, was, your car was fast. Oh, yesterday it was. Fast. I'm just, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, but I'm just yeah. saying, like that's how this car in you general. Might, but it didn't matter how fast Freddie's car was. You would have faded if you didn't a little make bit. Make up ground on a restart. Yeah. You would have faded a little bit as the as the run went on, but not not to the where not you to were. where he was, not yeah. to where you were. It's just it's just it's just hard to. Pass. Eric Jones was master of restarts yesterday he would go three wide to the top and we ran around him then he he jumped three wide like two restarts in a row to the high side and passed like three rows of cars there was one re- did you see the one restart with briscoe i, briscoe, I don't remember briscoe did it i forget what restart was we were towards the front but he he had to pass five rows of cars yeah. here's, here's it's unreal want, here's what i want to know on that stat because you have all the information and i, I don't have I don't, stats i don't have smt i don't have all that stuff you guys have what is the top speed Coming off of turn two, when you restart about 20th on the first lap after the green falls versus the next lap when you're wide open at speed. Because to me, that tells you how hard that third lane can go on that restart. Yeah. That's what well, I, so I, I can tell you this the third lane, I asked about it yesterday. I asked what the throttle traces were because if we were going to go up there, I wanted to give them heads yeah. up. And it was just like running the second lane, but. Yeah, but I'm curious what the speed is because yeah, there's a reason that third the speed, there's a reason really. that third lane works on a restart and it doesn't work on the next well, lane. Well, it's air. What happened was it's just yeah, it's it, but you're coming up to speed. You're not wide open when you get to turn one on it's a restart. Definitely, but yeah, dude. Think about you're taking two laps from there. Cars are stretched out this wide. When you go down to turn one, the first lap, the group's this small, so it's two by two, but row after row. Yeah, there's no air at and all. It's, it's, I, I understand so, that, but the speed is vastly different it's too. monkey see monkey do also because the reason like to your point the reason why chase is making up ground is everybody's just bottlenecked you know what i mean they're all stacked yeah. up they're not going anywhere you lift i lift. chase the chase goes doesn't. up and he's got clean air he's driving by everybody but then suarez did it first that i noticed uh i didn't see when jonesy did it he did um, a bunch of times um but then briscoe did it and then people started to get wise to it and not so much they didn't they didn't 
mimic that move as much as they just took it away. Guard it. They just went up there yeah. and blocked that top lane a little bit, and then you can't go anywhere. And then they would come back to the middle. Yeah. And then what happens is a lot of times, especially at the end, um, they're fighting for that lane, yeah. and then they end up running each other too high, and now yeah. you're up in the sh- once you get above that, you know, that second or second, you know, so two and a half lanes, you're same over. Thing is a, same thing as any other race. The later it gets in the race, the, you don't want to be on the outside yeah. on restart and up near the front. So, TJ, stage one, I don't think you were very good stage one, were you? No. I mean, you were back there kind of with no. me. We just took four tires every time until – You we ran were, long? And then, well, we ran long at the end there. We The other but times the first we did. But the first time did you run long? Uh – no, we just pitted like normal, and then we took four. Everyone was trying to, everyone was messing around with two and stuff, so that hurt. Um, yeah, we didn't run long until the late in the race. Yeah, you had a good finish, man. P two. Yeah, we were probably tenth to fifteenth place somewhere in that area. Like if we would just kept going and everything cycled out the same, we were probably going to finish between tenth and fifteenth. I'd say probably just outside the top ten. I was looking at laps led last night on the year, and Larson has led five hundred thirty one laps. He's led the most of any Chevy driver. Denny has led 395 laps, the most of a Toyota driver. Logano has led 177 laps, the most of a Ford driver. 72 of those, though, came at Daytona and Atlanta, which we all know he's good at those places. Then I was looking at TJ, who I think is having a good year, by the way, right on the cusp of making up points. You led six laps all year. No, we haven't had a like, I mean, year. So when you look at what does it take to win, it, it's leading laps, obviously. Yeah, we're but not. you were in the right spot, right time. It could have easily walked away with a win Strategy. something happened. Our strategy put us, you know, and with that race, you'd, it was catching the cautions. Yeah. So you catch the caution at the right time, and we did. So you know, I heard, and we we have it on our notes here, and we I heard it mentioned on the teardown last night. You know, the 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 concerns about the Ford winless streak. Uh, I'm not so much concerned about the winless streak as I am the fact that they're not in contention to win. You know what I mean? It's not like they're just getting edge. I mean, you're obviously in contention yesterday being second, Listen, but, the, the second but you're most, not a second-place yeah. car yesterday. Which driver in the Ford camp do you think has led the second most laps? Blaney? No, it's going to be somebody off the wall. It's Todd Gilliland. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, from Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, but that yeah. is – but but yeah, holy cow. Yeah, I mean – I mean, Larson has led three times more laps than for, the best Ford driver, and then Todd Gilliland is second. He ain't a flagship guy. Nothing no. against Todd. <laughs> no. And, you know, it's just, for me, it's, you know, it, like I said, there, there's not, I mean, I, there's no, there's, I think there's four guys right now in the playoffs in Fords, like if it ended today. I, I mean, that's, you know, what, a quarter of the playoffs is. <laughs> um, so, I, I just, that would be my concern is the fact that not only have they not won, which is not easy to win, but the, they really haven't been in position to win other than maybe the, road, the first two. Yeah, I don't think um, <clears throat> – I definitely don't think everything is as strong as we wanted it to be right now, but I don't think it's – you know, I know there's there's things in the pipeline that are being worked on and, and ironed out, just like everybody. I mean, um, and they'll keep working on it. It's, I mean, last year they – or in Phoenix, they pretty much dominated. Is is that something that we could potentially not see this year, or do you think they'll regain it's, themselves? It's a long time to Phoenix. <laughs> I don't know. It's It could be – I'm going to go ahead and tell you that, like, the end of the year completely fits Ryan Blaney's, like, all his best tracks are, like, the last three tracks of the year, four tracks. So, um, I don't think it's going to be – I could easily see, you know, one of them guys getting hot again. You never know. I mean, we were – who knows? Maybe Brad wins two, three, or whatever, and then he goes on it. You just never know. Yeah, I, I mean, don't wanna, I don't want to put Freddie on spot when I say this, but talk about – Just put him on the spot. Needing to be hot at the end of the year. 23-11 pit crews, holy giveaway races. Like Tyler Reddick had a massive lead yesterday. He had a huge lead, yeah. You you come in with a I couldn't six find second. him one time. I look up, I'm like, there's Denny. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and I know how competitive obviously Denny and Michael Jordan are, but man, twenty three eleven has got to get their pit crew problems fixed. It was uh yeah, I think Nick said he had like a five and a half second lead and then he came out behind Denny. Second and a half behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. But how do you fix that at this point? You don't you, you just stops. keep working, <laughs> get better. I mean, you're not gonna Unless you got some developmental guy that you can bring up, you're not going to go hire anybody away from another team in the middle of the year like this. But so, it's, and it's so much different. You know, these guys have been under contract for years, Casey, but they've not been in long term contracts for years um, like they are now. I mean, they're locking these guys in for five years, and that's longer than most driver contracts are for. Just for the record, for you fans that are listening, but there's such a big emphasis on pit stops and all for all the right reasons, and those guys make a big check. They got make yeah. a big, big paycheck. There's a lot, a lot more, more than spotters make, by the way. Um, and when the race is on the line, it's our job to keep the driver safe, 
to keep them out of accidents and to help them win. And it's also the pit crew's job. It, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, the, the timing of the stop. There is, you know, I, I don't know the, the details of, you know, how is Tyler getting into the box? What was their, you know, the, was their, they've been qualifying good, so I'm guessing their pit stall selection has been pretty good. But there's just things, there's a lot of factors that enter. Just like a restart, who's good at restarts? Well, there's so many factors that matter at that as well. But, you know, did, did, did Tyler stop long? Because if he stops two feet shorter or two feet longer of than where them guys need him, it's, I mean, you're probably going to lose spots. It, it looked, it looked to me by eye that they had some kind of issue on the right rear. Their, their last, that green flag stop was fourteen point three seconds. Yeah, that's a little long. And and Denny's was ten point eight. Yeah. So. Yeah. NASCAR also announced that the CW will broadcast the final eight Xfinity races this year. What do you guys think of the, that news? I, I it's interesting the way it's going down. It sounds to me Bob was feeding us some info, me and Brett, about. Well, I'm too dumb to understand why, so I asked why. Yeah, uh, you know, and it's it sounds like NBC, it's still NBC production. Yep. It's still going to be the NBC crew, the NBC booth, um, but they have basically sold the rights to CW for these last eight races. And it sounds to me, according, you know, I think Bob made a great point about NBC, which this is concerning to me. NBC wanting to get their NASCAR races off of their schedule so that they can fill it with college football games. So that's that's uh, that's a concerning thing for me to hear. Um, but, but if if you're NBC, you get money from yeah, CW. It's a win-win. You get rid of a product that you're not supporting next year, and you get inventory now to go sell for your network. So you get double, if not more than double, the money that you were going to get holding this inventory. I think it's a huge win for the sport. Because we're putting some of the best racing in America on its new channel in the playoffs with all of the hype of the of the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. So brilliant on CW's part to to get their brand out there. More people will hear about CW, in my opinion, in the last you know eight races of this year than they've ever heard about it in their lives. I'd never heard of CW until we until they announced that this deal was even going to happen next year, TJ. So I think for CW for Xfinity. Um, it's brilliant, and for for NBC, it's a business move with probably big, you know, outcomes to the bottom line. I think the the and the thing that like okay, first of all, I don't want to hear that you can't find a CW because you have it. Everybody has it. <laughs> Just it's look free. on Twitter. Even There's if you got bunny ears, it's it's yeah. If you got bunny ears, you've got the CW. Yeah. And it, if I know you, it's might you. I I can't promise you right now. I could not tell you what channel the CW is, but I'll know it here pretty soon. And you only got to find it once. We're not moving around. The Xfinity series yeah. will live on CW for the next eight races and then a year, at least a year. I'm sure it's multi year deal. Years. Um, so it, I I get it. I don't know what channel it is either right now, but I'm gonna find it. You're gonna find it one time, and yeah. you're never gonna have to look for it again. So TJ's probably I don't know. Are you old enough to remember the bunny ears with tinfoil on the end of them? <laughs> I never used tinfoil. No, uh, tinfoil yeah. helped you get like a better signal i'm the oldest I, guy i don't know if that's legit i think that was i don't know it's for real but that's southern ingenuity yeah <laughs> but, well yeah. Mo, i mean it wasn't true it, it never worked I yeah mean, i don't <laughs> i just think it was <laughs> have you ever chewed on tinfoil with a cavity in your mouth no no try why it. would you chew tinfoil to begin with i don't know but try it you got any cavities I, where no. do you I, why would you do that from? fillings you have a feeling he's an idiot i did have a feeling he's uh, a complete uh, you've never done anything that will did you ever put your tongue on the little nine volt batteries Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, do the tinfoil thing. <laughs> I'm not surprised. There's a, don't you have a joke about batteries and something else? I'm not telling yeah. you more jokes. <laughs> I'm not asking you any more hypothetical questions. <laughs> I, you've already asked that one on here before. Do you have that? <laughs> Let's well, head into spot on, spot off. <laughs> First topic, after Byron spun Chastain during the final overtime attempt, William had this to say afterwards. He blocked me late, which is understood, but I was already there. I hate that it happened, but it is the last lap. I'm going to take the run. Of course, Chastain declined to comment. Clearly a little bit frustrated there. Spot on, spot off, Freddie. Um, I'm, I'm spot on for um, William's comments. I... And look, watching it live, I thought William just wrecked the hell out of him. I, you the know, dog food out of him. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I was sitting on the plane with Lambert, and I got a video, or somebody posted a video on Twitter, and you could see Ross clearly 
comes down on him, and he's trying to he's trying to block that run. You know, uh, Byron's got a big run off yeah, it too. He's turning down, and he's definitely coming down the hill to block him. And Byron's just there, and he's not. I mean, he could. I guess he could have cut him a break if he wanted to, but why would you on why the last you? lap of the race? Yeah. Um, so he just runs in the back of him and, and gets rid of him. And that's listen, you like if anybody is probably accused of arrow blocking more than anybody in the sport right now. It's probably Ross. He's probably the most aggressive at doing it. So this is probably somebody taking the opportunity to send a message like you're not gonna you're not gonna block yeah. me on the last it's lap the of last this race. Lap, though, yeah. too, though. I mean if that's thirty to go, I don't oh, think yeah. William wrecks him, but yeah, I'm but, I'm spot spot on for that. Uh you know, you, you can't you have to set the set like you said, you gotta set the the tone. You have to set the boundaries on what how a guy's going to drive you because if he keeps doing that and you you keep lifting he's just going to do it time and time again he slid up in front of us when we caught him and brad had to lift off a two because he decided to go up and said it he was protecting the bottom we went to go to the we went to the high side and here he comes up off the corner and forces us to lift and because we don't want to tear the nose off or just do something dumb and um like it could have been done there too like at some point you can only do it so many times before somebody's not going to lift and william ended up being that guy i heard william's comments on prn and i was a hundred percent spot off because the replay i saw was from like behind the cars and it looked like william drove through his left rear and just wiped him out and i was like william's crazy and then i saw the in-car camera angles from both cars overlap with one another and it's very obvious Ross comes down. So I am spot on for Williams comments. I'm spot off for Ross not commenting. Um, man, this could start a little bit of a feud, which Ross is in a feud with everybody. So I don't know how it starts. I mean, it'd be fun if it did, but if Ross thinks he didn't do anything wrong, then he's mad. Does he, but obviously he declined to comment before seeing the replay. Like, do you think that they're, I mean, to me, he, he knows what back. he was doing inside the car, but I'll tell you this about Ross having worked with him. When he puts that helmet on, he don't know what's going on. He's just on kill mode, and it's good for good for us all because it's entertaining, um, but Ross made a big mistake here, and, and the, the thing that's got to happen with his with his – from a driver perspective and even the spotter helping him, he's got to realize he's not catching the leader at that point because he's not. He's also got to realize the momentum from behind him is coming, which is why he tried to throw the block. So once you get too wide, you're, 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 he's dead in the water right there. So his mistake cost William a spot and a point. His mistake cost him a finish. Uh, 27 or so points probably roughly. Uh, what did he finish, 30th? 32nd. 30, oh, 31st, 30 yeah. 30 30 30 second. 29 uh, points. Look at 32nd. Th- yeah. That's massive. So uh, he, he's got a – And you got a wrecked race car. And you got a wrecked race car. And you, Yeah, I mean, just – that was a – I thought it was all William Byron, and I now think it's all Ross Chastain. What did you say, 29 points? I don't know. Ish. Ish, yeah, probably. That's uh, almost three spots in the standings. Wow. Which is a lot at the end of the season. That's three playoff points at the end of the season if you're in the top ten. It is three spots. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you fall to? He is now 11th. If he gave him 30 Ooh. points, he'd be – Ross is going to have to comment on seventh. it at some point, we're, we're, Casey. We're probably pretty decently close to that. To your point. like He's not going to get to Talladega 17th. and reporters yeah. not bring it up. Right. So right. so I get that he didn't want to comment. Um, I'm not a big fan of no comment, but, I mean – I think we assume that. I mean, I'm just not. Yeah, that's fair. That's what makes our sport so beautiful is these guys get put on the spot all the time. Right. I don't want to talk about it. Well, no, <laughs> I bet you don't. But yeah. that's what makes this sport. That's cool. why we're here, though, so you do talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll find out next week. Yesterday's race at Texas proves the track does not need to be oh. reconfigured. Spot on, spot off, TJ. Ah, uh, man, I'm spot off. I, I still don't. They're just. The only, I mean, it's interesting because the lanes you're taking this, there's two racetracks there. We only run on one of them, um, the bottom half of it, really. And um, I don't know. It, it's just not. Xfinity ran on the bottom half. Tr- Cup didn't run on the bottom half. Well, Xfinity moved up, too. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Xfinity did move up. They got the a little groove, bit. They got the groove pretty wide. But when you say move up, they were not. They were not. <laughs> they not. weren't like where we used one to lane run. Up. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Like, I don't think we're running half of it. And we still have half the race track that's not being used, roughly. More than half. So, I don't know. It's still, it makes it still – it makes it challenging because you're taking all these guys – and putting him into this tighter window, which and it, and it's a little treacherous if you get on the high side. But man, I I 
I hate to think what a race would be like with all these cup guys in cars that are like Xfinity cars. I it'd think a, oh, it'd be amazing. I mean, I think we end up probably working the groove up even more at times than I. Well, I mean, especially you know, if there's more competitive cars too. You know, if you had you got more competitive drivers, that's what I'm saying. So it's I I I think it, that would be a great. I show. think that the I I I not that I disagree. I think that the the reason we can move up in three and four is, and Kyle talked about it after the truck race, you could still feel the effects of the, the traction compound, whatever that was. Resin, Just a little bit. You know, yeah. they're still there. If that's not there, you're not using that. It's the only reason we run up in one and yeah. two. Yeah. Um, and it's just like you said it's it's frustrating to go in there and not, i mean we're not using half the racetrack probably more than half the racetrack and then you've got you know three and four there's bumps over there that yeah you're basically playing russian roulette like it, whether you know these guys danny hamlin's pretty good he's not he's not bad and he just went in there knowing i've got to commit to this and if i hit what's happening is it seems to me like they they're hitting these bumps and, and bottoming out and that's what's you know yeah. and you saw it with hamlin you saw it with christopher bell you saw it with so John i asked, Hunter I had to ask brad about that and he says it's not just the bump it's just the way the air is in these cars too because those guys he's like all of a sudden the front tires grab at some point and then it just swings the back zero side force jimmy john yeah. five jimmy johnson i mean like there's kyle bush jimmy johnson right by themselves on, on saturday yeah like it's just i mean we want we always ask for it to be challenging we want it to challenge the drivers we want it to make it hard for them but that it, it's not I, I don't it's not the same to me it's not they're not challenge like they're going in the corner and then they're just losing it it's something else you know on the racetrack that's affecting their balance of you know they're hitting a bump or whatever um but i, I would rather have bumps to deal with than the aero stuff <laughs> i'll yeah. tell you that much here in the 2000s when we went bananas would add mile and a half um we've lost kentucky we've lost chicago land we've lost atlanta that's three mile and a half so obviously we still run on atlanta it races nothing like a mile and a half racetrack how many more are you gonna lose? Yeah, I mean, when I, when, when when in theory, Freddie, this is your best racing. This is the best a mile and a half program's ever been. But you're saying reconfigure it. How are you gonna reconfigure Texas when you look at that place? So the the in a perfect world, well, dynamite. <laughs> a perfect <laughs> but, but world. Are you gonna blow up? Are you gonna blow up the condos in turn two because no. they matter? I don't I think probably change something about the configuration of turns one and two. Though I think that in it, it, who perfect, the. F paved homestead and where are they at can we please go get them out of their grave and bring them back to life and let them fix this racetrack the, well and like i was gonna say in a perfect world i would love to see another mile and a half true oval like homestead it's not gonna happen the way the footprint is the way the walls are built down the front straight away i think we're 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 locked into this always being a mile and a half with kind dog, of leg dog legs you know, you're not. I, I heard some people. Jordan, I think, was last night saying, he, you know, a, a three quarter mile short track would be great. Did he not watch Richmond? They're not. <laughs> they're not. He's and he, he's one of the people that doesn't like Richmond the most. I think, uh, but that, that's not going to happen. I think that they're locked in. And I think that the thing that makes the most sense is just go back to what we had. Like the reason that there was nothing really, truly terrible about the racing before. It was just the fact that we had weepers that you that we were there for a week if it rained. Um, so, you know, if, I think that just getting back to where we could use the entire racetrack is a big step forward for us. And, and we have to figure out what that, what, whatever. It's Let me ask you that. this. Why is the Xfinity race a bad race? Well, yeah, I mean, it wasn't great. I mean, you it didn't was, think like, I mean, it was I, better than the cup race, but it wasn't. A, I the mean, thing about the Xfinity cars is those guys can get sideways and they can drive us still. like Sam Mayer was sideways sliding around. And the difference in those cars and our cars is you can still use. If you run him down, you can follow him off into that corner and see his see him get loose without even doing anything. You can also get him loose. You, you, that's what I'm saying. You can you can manipulate the air from behind the guy rather than and that and that enables you to get beside of him. And there's I think there's more of a side draft in the Xfinity cars and trucks too. So if he gets beside you, but then you side draft him, pull him back, and then you go to the next corner. He doesn't have any air on his door now, so now you're really right. Now it's a you know, it's, it's, and they're sliding everywhere. I just, the cup guys can't do that. You follow somebody in the corner. We've literally seen them go to the middle one and two and get six ends from each other. And the guy behind just had the biggest moment ever. And the guy in front just drive away, you know, and I don't know. I think, I think there should be more, the drivers should have more offensive tools to use rather than um, just be stuck. You know, and I don't mean John Hunter drive through them. I mean actually manipulate the air where they can get loose. We don't like John Hunter. We'd run over as a gun on lap three. So, why were you in his way? He told me you backed into him. 
Yeah, we probably did off of two. We just came right back into them. Uh-huh. So you should have been on the gas off of two. Yeah, we mm-hmm. just like in turn one at Coda. I get we should have been, been in the gas there. If he, hit you on, if he hit you on entry, that's that's his fault. If he hits you on exit, that means you're in the way. Yeah, we're two by two, twenty fifth. <laughs> we're going somewhere. You were right there probably. So no, you, he was thirty fifth. Yeah, we actually <laughs> we actually came back to you more, but. Again, lap three of a 267 lap race, and there was a checker flag so the you next think lap. That's too early to be aggressive. <laughs> I mean, I do, but not. I mean, everyone has their own opinion. I mean, there's only 265 to go. He's got yeah, to get there. Uh, 64. Yeah, but that's not that many when you think about it. It's only three yeah. hours. Three hours. Every spot. Yeah. I mean, actual contact. You, I'm coming through on the late exit of two. Like, okay, we have at it, buddy. We'll see you off a of four when you're wrecking. I love getting TJ riled up. <laughs> oh, I was so riled up on that. I you're mean, riled just, up now. <laughs> Because, dude, you're you're there. You work all week on a car. I don't, but the guys do. You go there. You qualify. And we made our own luck qualifying bad. We practice good, qualify bad. And you make your own luck. Put yourself back there. But there's just like, where are you going at this point? Like, the race, there's going to be so many things that happen. It just doesn't make sense to me. But that's. He said he was going to the front. To the front. Uh, no, to 23rd, I think, actually. <laughs> Maybe 5th. I don't remember. Somewhere in that area. Spot on, spot off. Chase Elliott is a championship four contender after his Texas win. Brett. Well, he does drive for Hendrick Motorsports, so that helps. That would um, sneak up on you? He, he, he does have a win. That also helps. Um, you look at the last three races, what are they going into that thing? Is it Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville? Yep. Leading into Phoenix. the Homestead Championship in uh, Phoenix. <laughs> Um, turns out Hendrick Motorsports is pretty good at all them tracks. Uh, he's led double the amount of laps this year from a percentage standpoint. Last year, he led like 2.5% of laps the whole season. This year, he's 4.6%. He led 14% of the race yesterday. When you look back at when he was really hot, he was close to like that 10% laps led mark, which is crazy hot, crazy insane, right? Um, it's, it's too early to say that he is a favorite because to me, the favorites are – Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin from a speed perspective, but Kyle Larson, he could screw up a two car funeral right now. I mean, Not he, William he, Byron. He, I mean, William Byron too. Obviously, he's third. Um, but for me, that fourth driver is, I mean, same deal. To, uh, the twenty car, he's stupid fast everywhere, but he can't put it together. But you can't say he's not a guy, but he's certainly not the favorite, you know. But man, you, I mean, going back to history, even when TJ won a championship. It's a big deal to win, Mark, win that first race of that that round of eight. Yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I mean, some of the stats, I, you know, I, they said – I was listening to Teardown last night, and I heard them say, you know, uh, Allen was kind of pretty adamant, maybe even a little standoffish in his press race, you know, press conference because they were like – people are asking him, like, are you back? And he's like, what do you mean back? We've never gone anywhere, you know. And, and to your point, he was much more dominant in the past. But to hear some of the stats of – you know, right now he's fourth in points. He's got the fourth best average running position. Um, you know, the last year I didn't realize, you know, after obviously last year wasn't a great year for him after he got injured, no. but he still had the fifth best average finish of the se- of anybody for the season. So he, he, I think we expect so much out of Chase and put him on such a pedestal that even when he's just consistently really good, it's not enough. And you, and you, you expect him to be that guy that's leading 10% of the laps and, and winning races or in contention to win. And, and listen, I felt like over the last, I don't know, two, three weeks, we talked about it on here maybe about a month ago that there was a huge gap between the 24 and the 5 versus the 9 and the 48. And I think Chase has done a lot to close that gap in the last two weeks for sure. You know, they were they were they had a lot of speed in Martinsville right there in contention all day with them other two. Um, and then obviously got a 1-2-3 finish. And then yesterday, obviously, and we talked about this when Raja was here. I, I by no means that I think Chase had the best car yesterday. I don't think that there was really any point in the race where I thought Chase had the best car yesterday. But if you're consistent enough to hang around that top five, top seven, wins find you. You know, you, the guy, some guys spin out. You know, you get multiple restarts, and then you take advantage of you know the restart with Reddick and and. Danny, Danny, get the lead, yeah. and then it's, we talk about how hard it is to pass. Once you get the lead, if you can just get away on restarts, yeah. you're not going to catch it. I think, you know, I don't know if I'm ready to write Chase into the championship four quite yet, but he's trending that direction. I mean, he's he's obviously putting together a very solid year so far, but we're way too early into the season. I mean, yeah. you could, you know, you could go through a summer slump, and then we're gonna it's just can fade away. You never know, but. I think um, you media, know media want to talk about it. I, yeah, get, I get why. But I, just, always I, I pulled up last year's finishes: Vegas, thirty second. That ain't good. Homestead, fifteenth. 
That ain't good. Martinsville, 17th. Well, no, you ain't going to make the Final Four if you do that. Yeah, no. Yeah. By no means. And honestly, yesterday we um, – we struggled getting going on restarts yesterday, and we lined up behind Denny, and we probably cost Denny the we cost Denny the lead because we weren't pushing him on that restart when the caution came out quick. Chase was able to be in front of him, and Chase didn't even he never cleared Denny, but he had a nose in front of him when the caution came out. And now and, he's in control of the restarts, and now he's controlling it. So it's not this isn't like oh man, Chase Elliott just went up there and you know won this thing because I'm not 100 percent sure he passes Denny straight up. I mean he had numerous chances. I don't think he does honestly because. When we caught Chase, he was riding about seven car lengths behind Denny and kind of just staying between seven and ten back. And, and um, you know, Denny is – this isn't Denny's first race. Denny knows what to do when they get there. Um, he's going to make it very hard on Chase. If Chase gets it within three car lengths, Denny is going to probably do something to knock him back ten. I think the three of us agree the five and 24 are faster than the nine every week. Speed-wise, yes. Um, I feel like the nine – I feel like the nine is much more consistent than them other two. You know, I feel like the five, you talked about it. The five is five is the fastest car on a racetrack, it seems like, every week and has one win to show for it. Um, they just can't that's put, kind of put been a Larson, race together. That's kind of Larson. So, uh, Curtis, when he first started, yeah. that's, that was so, like so Larson, since, too. I mean, uh, even going back that far, but I mean, especially with, with them guys, the one year, obviously, he dominated, won a championship. But the, the, like we saw last year, we saw it this year, crazy fast. And I, I, list, I was literally standing there watching them come down a pit, uh, the front stretch under yellow, and I seen something rolling around, and it rolled into the grass, and I was like, oh, yeah. almost looked like a wheel nut. I'm like, nah, couldn't be a wheel nut. And I looked to my right, and Larson's smoking on the apron. I was like, holy shit, the wheel's going to fall off the five, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just, and I don't know what happened. I'm sure that, you know, just some kind of. Well, the wheel fell issue, off, but, and then he rolled to the bottom, yeah. and then he got held for two And then he got held for two I mean, still gets it back, but he, I'm sure it must have done damage I'll tell to you, it. the 20 car came back that thing was destroyed we couldn't it pass like. talk about how hard it is to pass we were behind the 20 with no yeah. right front fender the ref the right rear clips knocked off the i mean thing. the thing <laughs> wouldn't meet the wheel the it was shortened up by like three feet in the one corner there so <laughs> couldn't pass them i'll tell you what uh did happen is um you might have seen this uh <laughs> denny uh he did spin out in front of your favorite driver denny, all of them <laughs> all of, yeah there's one in front of him um but yeah, I mean, I agree with you guys. I think I think if you're picking a championship four right now, it's it's the three you guys mentioned, obviously Danny, Kyle, and and, and William, and then you, I, you know, obviously we always get to see a wild card get in there, or you know, somebody gets hot late like Blaney last year. But you have to pick a, a Hendrick or Gibbs car right now. I think you know they're the yeah, top six in points. <clears throat> so who's the more consistent ones of that? You know, I don't. You, you can't put. Christopher Bell in right now. Over, I think Christopher Bell is much faster than Chase, but they have four guys or five guys that are rating, oh, yeah. and they're all pretty much they're Gibbs all, or Hendrick. So yeah. I mean, Ty Gibbs could get pretty hot. Ty yeah. Gibbs consistency he's worries fast me. Fast everywhere, but he's, <clears throat> yeah, he, they got to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, he. So we and this is the thing. We caught him yesterday at near the end. And we were much better than him. He tries to drive into one, and we had ran him down. This is where the experience should or the he needs to. This guy just caught me from way back. I'm in a bad spot right here. He drives it into one super hard, trying to stay on the outside of us and just gets loose and goes way up to the wall. It's like at some point, you know, a, a veteran guy is going to be like, okay, you got me here. I'm just going to let – go ahead. You're faster. Go up here and wreck. Send somebody back to me. I'll get a free spot. But instead, he loses – and he took himself out. And I'm going to tell you, if he would have been right behind us or within a spot or two of us and late restarts, he might have been a factor in that. So yeah. – I had to laugh yesterday. I, w I went to text him after the race was over. Our buddy Justin – he th he tries to throw this massive block on us down the back stretch for like twenty third, and it didn't work. So then he we get underneath him. Now he's really shallow into three, and he washes the racetrack and gets passed by like two more guys. And I'm like, man, I want to take him like, if you're gonna be a dumb <laughs> block for twenty third down the back stretch, you better get it done because now you're twenty seventh because you <laughs> yeah. missed the block. Yeah, <laughs> I, they. I, I I wish I could say they had a good run yesterday, but I'm not allowed to compliment that team anymore. So, dude, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I looked at one time and Kaz Grow was like 15th, yeah. like racing, like I'm like damn. So that was. I had two things impress me this weekend about Rick Ware racing, and and I think Casey's gonna be surprised by what I'm about to say. Um, I think we're all gonna be surprised. What you're say, I Casey. found out that they have hired a very experienced PR person in Mike Arning to help them with their public relations work, which I think is. A brilliant move on their part and I also found out that they have their own kitchen in the garage and for you folks sitting at home and you hear Rick Ware Racing has its own kitchen in the garage what does that mean that's a big deal 
I mean, we all eat basically from two or three different food vendors. Um, and for Rick Ware Racing to invest, and it almost looks like it's in partnership with RFK. It's nice. Uh, Dude, Andy, I've known Andy the chef forever, and, and so he was a chef at Stewart. He's a legit chef. He like, was the chef at Stuart Haas Racing yeah. last year, and he left Stuart Haas Racing, or is no longer with Stuart Haas Racing, and now um, Rick Ware Racing has a has their own freaking food tent. That it's is a, nice. The, the culture of Rick Ware Racing has shifted greatly from when, and I'm sorry he's your son, but it's shifted greatly from when Cody Ware was driving these cars to where they're at now. They're in a... Much, much, much better space. And I read BJ McLeod's comments slash saw the video last week when he was um, – what show was he on? DJD Reloaded. DJD. Reloaded. Uh, and he said, we spent millions of dollars more, and we didn't run one position better. And then I look at the points, and they're ahead of the Zane Smith with Spire. They're ahead of Harrison Burton with Penske slash Wood Brothers. They're, they're – way more competitive. Now, it's going to be harder for them to get things to go perfectly for them because of all the things that exist. It, when, when you're back in points, you go through tech last, you get a bad qualifying draw, you get a bad pit selection, like you're in a hole. It's not like those top ten guys mm -hmm. in points. It's a lot harder. But I, when I found out those two things that are non – because, man, Rob, I grew up Rob H Racing um, 2003 to 2008. He, he had one marketing person and one licensing person. Because he said, hiring all those people don't make my cars go fast. That, that was his belief. And it was the, the culture was, I'm going to have more horsepower than you, and I've got Todd Parrott. Obviously, he had a lot of other talented people. Um, but it comes down to people. I think Rick Ware is now in a position where they can attract better people because of the other things that I'm telling you they're doing. They're slowly improving all, all across the board. So, 100%. Right. And obviously, Justin Haley's there, and I have a big affinity to him. And um, Kaz has been... I mean, we sat here on this show a year ago when it came out and said, what the F is he doing? And he's out running Colic cars a lot. Now, he didn't yesterday. Colic had a good run. I think both guys in the top 15, top 16. Um, but in general, he's been racing ahead of those guys a lot. Yeah, I think Ty was 16th and Daniel was 20th. Um, I, I would I would love to compliment them, but I'm, they get upset every time I talk about them. So I'm not going to mention I them wonder anymore. how. Wonder how Justin and Kaz are as their buddies. Their yeah, buddies. Yeah, they're buddies. Well, I mean, they buddies. run like it. They run close, and I mean, it's they're competitive. Anytime yeah. Justin shows up, Big Al's Kaz is usually. With oh, really? So. Nice. That's cool. Safe to say. That's glad. That's to, good to see those guys. Bro, man. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Shifting gears to the Xfinity race, Ryan Sieg drove Sam Mayer too clean, coming to the checkered flag. Spot on. Spot off, Freddie. Spot on. I mean, yeah, spot on. He was too clean, like. Listen, I, I wish – did you pick up – well, how many starts does Ryan Sieg have? Did you look at this stat? Probably 300. I don't know. It's a bunch. My – like, you you don't get many opportunities to win races, especially if you've done this for 300 and something races. And, and that's every series. One that's yet. every series. So. Yeah. Um, and, it, like, I get it. You know, it was hard to watch because uh, I was spotting for his brother Kyle, obviously. So we put tires on, and I knew we were going to be kind of aggressive through traffic. And I was like, listen, the 39's leading. If he gets away on this restart, you you cannot draw a caution. So you're going to have to be extra careful, you know, to make sure we don't bring a caution out. So now I'm kind of watching that. And I see he got away, and I was like, oh, God, he's gone. Like, oh, I was he like, took off. I was like, he's gone. They're never going to catch him. And I think it was only like 10 to go, maybe. Um, he started chipping away at so it. So then you just see, and I was I was talking to a crew chief in the garage yesterday. I don't know if he wants to be named, so I won't name him. But he's like, yeah, it just looked at me like he got tight. And I'm not talking about the car. You know, it's – and it's – listen, it's a different world. I think Joey was talking about this on the broadcast. If you've never been in that position, that's a hard spot to be in, where you've got a big lead and there's multiple grooves to run. It's You know, if it's something like Martinsville where you're just – I know I got to run the bottom. I got to hit my marks. That's one thing. But you know, if you're running the middle or the bottom, and he's running the top and he's gaining, now now you got to change your lane. And I think with ten to go, he wasn't. I was watching the lap times. Yeah, he, and he was only he a tenth better. I feel like he should have never got off the bottom. I think that you know, well, I think he should have went higher on the last lap. Well, on the last lap, but, he, but I'm saying <clears throat> before he caught him, I felt like he yeah. caught him because he started moving around. It was only a tenth. He was only, and I was like, dude, this is over. He's gonna drive away, and it was yeah. like a tenth, and then it went to. Okay, there's two tens. But, then it went to three, and I was like, oh, this is going to get close. Yeah, at the end of the day, my biggest issue with it is, like, you're coming down the front straightaway side by side for your first career win. you got to stuff that guy in the wall. Like, you've got to run him in the fence earlier. You've got to yeah, do something. I guess that wasn't your tweet on Couch Racer then, so I didn't he see. went down clean. I'm like, who the f*** tweeted this? <laughs> 
<laughs> must have been John. I yeah. I listen. I I mean, it's not the right thing to do, but I could apologize in victory lane with my trophy. Like it's it's like here's my trophy. I'm really sorry about what I had to do to you. And let me tell you something. If the roles were reversed, Sam Mary would have had his ass in the wall. So you know, yeah, I it's think Sam just, would use him up. So you you I get it. It's not the way, the right way to raise. It's not the what you would love what to would see happen. What would Ty Gibbs do? That's yeah. what I would just ask myself. Run that son of a <laughs> in the fence early, you know. As soon as he gets his front tires are right, right as soon as you see the beginning of his car, you come up. Yeah. Like, because you're not going to get turned at that point. If he's right here, as soon as you see that just, nose, you, yeah. I mean, you, don't, you, don't, you just got to drag him against the fence and scrub yeah, his you speed. Don't have like, to, you like, don't got to, like, wreck, wreck. You just yeah. drag him against the wall. I was but, sitting here looking at the top five teams since 2019 when it's really races. Gibbs, Junior Motorsports, colleagues, Stuart Haas, Childress. I don't see Ryan Sieg's team on here anywhere. No. Man, you cannot not win that race. And I was watching the same thing you were watching, lap times, the gap getting so much smaller. And I'm thinking, is this dude in his mirror? Is he freaking the hell out? Like, what? you're, you're giving this race away. But then they took the white, and, then, and I was like, man, he's still got a chance to win. He's, st- he's, he's going to win. He's going to win. And he didn't win. And it's his fault. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to give away a lane – or you don't I don't know why like you don't let Sam get a run on you down the back stretch and if he comes off on the bottom Sam had been running up so you know where he's gonna go you gotta take that away could your phone be any more obnoxious <laughs> mine yeah I don't hear it <laughs> you just showed, you didn't like, hear it? everybody's like everybody's yeah, looking bop, down, bop, like, bop, 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 I see that <laughs> I see a very um comment about that at least uh, some of the female listeners My were phone. trying to figure out what phone I didn't you know had. you could My make it vibrate. vibrate I ain't even got a Dude, it, just, it was just ringing. It just was. <laughs> oh, who was? You didn't. Hear, know. You didn't know that. <laughs> I don't have no. I don't have no missed call. Something. Then you got an alarm. Going Everybody's on. like looking. Like where is this? I was going to reach over and turn it off for you. I know. I didn't see it doing anything. I, I would have turned it up. That's another <laughs> issue you have. Oh, uh, I hate he didn't win. I was, I was man. I was really oh. obviously being part of that team. I just, now I don't think it needed to get to the point where we needed to put him in the wall. I no, think, I think he could have drove a better one and two on the last lap, and it's not even a factor. You I, win a race, you go to Talladega Dash for cash eligible. You're in the playoff. Like this is a life changing moment well, for this that, guy and, and his team. And let's be honest, he's probably got a shot at Talladega. That's what I'm saying. So a really good shot. That's, that's exactly so. what I'm telling you. Like yeah, holy. Drives me nuts. Yeah, this, you know what they say: nice guys finish second. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll hear our fans' thoughts on Reaction Theater. Hey NASCAR fans, FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is here. And right now, new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets, guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks. Just go to fanduelcom DBC to sign up. Then you can bet on everything from individual race winners to prop bets to which driver's going to take home the championship, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Start your engines with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash DBC to get started. FanDuel, authorized gaming operator of NASCAR. 21 and up and present in NC. First online real money wager, only $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.gov. I'm too drunk to get pissed over the ending. But I just have one simple question. What is Jimmy Johnson doing out there being the Daryl Waltrip? And I'm talking the last three years of this generation. I'm just going to ask a question. What's he doing going out there, finishing last, not even making races? That man's a great racer. What the f*** is he doing here? Whatever he wants. Yeah, he's a seven-time champion. I'm pretty sure he doesn't really care about your opinion. I watched the Darrell Walter playing play out, and it yeah. was painful. I don't think we're to the painful part for this yet for Jimmy. And, and, look, they want to expand. There's a lot of talk about them trying to go to three full-time yeah. teams. Uh, Jimmy's a great guy to lay the foundation for it. Got his first lead lap finish in this car. So, um, <clears throat> it's hard. Dude, I can't sit here and MF Jimmy Johnson. I don't he care went what he drove does. an Indy car. Like, because he wanted to. Who cares? Jimmy wants to run a cup car. Let him run a cup car. If he spins out, he spins out. Who gives? Who cares? He's had. If Jimmy's having fun, that's all that really matters. Uh, Holy guacamole! 
are y'all sure this is Texas they're racing at? The Xfinity race was awesome, and the cup race was pretty good, too. Oh, by the way, Denny's great. I agree with that guy. I agree with that. I agree with his last part. Especially. I agree with all three parts. Yeah. Pardon my language, but Ryan Priest is a fucking bitch, man. I mean, what the hell? Oh. Uh, think that, are that you guy, team that, Ryan on that, that guy's, team Ryan? That guy's calling from the bathtub. Or that whatever. hot tub. That guy was definitely in the hot tub. <laughs> yeah. There was more to it than just that, but I'm sure the, I don't know if that necessarily deserved to you, be uh, you, I, listen, destroy a guy. You don't. But, that's a place where you don't do that, in my opinion. You, I you don't. don't think so. You don't just go in the corner and turn a guy at, at Texas Motor Speedway. Not like that. I mean, I. I but hey, I mean, everyone has their own. Ways Espe- one of the, thing, the, the one of the worries for me there, especially, is you've got a lot of runoff. You know, you're gonna if you spin a guy, he's going a long way before he hits something. Yeah. Nice m- Elliot, boys! Woo! Going on. Probably also from the hot tub. He's, he's just got out of the tub from yeah from their windless streak. Probably damn. Chase one, and that chump Byron just straight dunked the watermelon man. Now I hope the watermelon man dunks that boy Byron in the face. Oh punk. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately for you, sir, um, that was more Walsh Ross's fault, I think. <laughs> well, the checker flag just finally fell after NASCAR tried to give it to their golden boy, but the racing gods had to, had their say and actually made him work for it. Oh, by the way, uh, Byron, you're you just Chastain, Chastain. Good job, buddy. <laughs> That's. <laughs> oh, man, I think I I wish people I know these people are reacting probably in the moment, and I swear in the moment I was like, damn, William wrecked the hell out of him. Too. <laughs> when I saw it later, I was like, not so yeah. much. William Byron just drives into the back of Ross Chastain, finally having a good day, chance to win. <laughs> Dumps us. Can't stand him. Who can't stand William Byron? He's like the nicest guy. Yeah, on the and he planet. doesn't. Yeah, uh, I, 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 these. I, what angle did these people watch from? Well, I'm telling you, they didn't see that in car camera. The, a lot of the the angles yeah. I saw were <clears> not <throat> good for William. And then when I saw that in car, the, the like the same one Brett saw, the laid over. It's Chase's car. I mean Ross's car and and William's car. It it was very obvious what happened. Yes, Chase Elliott, baby. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this. Oh, my God. I'm crying right now. I'm so damn happy. Oh, yes. Finally. It's so long. I'm not. I am worried. Was that you on the plane? <laughs> Shoot. I'm not sure, but I think he might be a Chase Elliott fan. I think it's the two dudes I was waiting on at the airport all night. <laughs> <laughs> that, they recorded that on the way. 100%. <laughs> Concerned about that person. Hey, guys. Just want to congratulate uh, Chase Elliott in uh, winning the race today. I feel like this is about as much as excitement as I can give him. It's about as much as he puts out other than winning <laughs> races. <laughs> Well played. Um, kind of reminds you of that guy like you knew in high school, and you're like, oh, yeah, he really made it. You're like, yeah, but you know, this guy's still a d- though. Nobody really likes him. <laughs> Jeez. I don't think like Chase uh, is a d- at all. No. I don't either. No. I think I think he's, he's I think he nice. just comes off very dry. And, yeah. And that's just his personality. Well, he don't have that cute accent his dad had. That was what was attractive for his dad. That was a cute accent? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other cute things about awesome him, so I think deal. he's doing okay. Oh, you think you think Chase is hot? A lot of people do. I think that's a valid comment. TJ, you think Chase is hot? I'm not answering that. (laughs) He didn't say no. That was not a no. That was not a no, by the way. I mean, I'm just ignoring your question. I'm ignoring your question. Well, I know they say it's uh, it ifs and buts were candy and nuts, man. (laughs) But if Larson did not lose that right rear tire, he would have smoked the field. In my opinion, but again, another but. NASCAR has got to be happy with that happening because Texas got a great race. This might be the first Jeff Gluck 
poll at Texas in years that's going to be voted most likely yes than no. Uh, so why? L- listen, Tiger Woods won the Masters for us yesterday. I mean, Chase Elliott won Texas Motor Speedway. His winless streak's over. Like All the right things happen. I just don't want NASCAR to get lost and think – that that was a good product and a good race no. because it was not. I 100% I voted yes in the poll and like Freddie because I thought it was a good entertaining race. I thought the right guy won. I thought it was a lot of lead changes. I mean, we had all the things, but the product was not good. No. And the reason it's, you know, not sold to you is because I said it was entertaining. There was a reason and entertaining because of all the cautions. Um all the restarts, the restarts are very entertaining. But you're coming off of two Bad races also that this that lower the bar a lot to <laughs> real bad races. For, for, Boy, Bristol you know. really spoiled us, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, we went from sure. we went from the clouds to like, but by mistake we got a good tire at Bristol. Yeah. We ain't had but a good tire since. I, I I I still don't know about that. I still think if it's seventy degrees and we go back there, that tire is not going to act that way. But we'll see. I don't know if the tire. I, I still just think there's you can't play offense at times when you should be able to. So. Here is our last call for this week. Hey, y'all. Just wanted to come on here real quick and just uh, let you know from a fan's perspective of uh, how today went. Uh, I was sitting over in turn one, and today I noticed that the fan zone, normally it's on this little midway, and they went ahead and put the merch trailers on the main road, and that spread everything out, and that was a huge win. Um, As far as the track goes, I kind of like it because it's challenging. I know the drivers don't like it because it's not, they think it's not really good racing, but I think it's just a challenge that they don't like. Um, if they are going to reconfigure it, I was sitting there thinking of what they could do, staring at that turn all day. Um, and I think maybe if you move that bottom line up and turn it into like almost like a Darlington, you're not getting an Atlanta vibe off that, but make them run closer to the wall. I think that could be a good change. That's the first time somebody's ever sent me a DM, like, hey, you got to listen to my call. So I thought it'd be like hot takes. Yeah, he gone. That's the last time. I'm going yeah, to block, would just block like, him. Like what's I'm just glad your DMs that. are open. That's kind of hot. Yeah, I leave yeah. my DMs are open. Slide in there. Most of them call DM me and complain about you. Brett blocked me. My Half my DMs are, can you get Brett to unblock me? <laughs> <laughs> That's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all should all screenshot it. I, I can't. It, and I can tell you why I blocked him, oh, idiots. So or many. it starts off with like, "Hey, I love the show. I tag Brett, but he can't see it anyway." So, pretty much. <clears throat> or can you please share this with Brett? It's hard to get blocked. Like y'all think it's easy. It's really not. <laughs> you're I mean, kidding me. seriously, that might be the dumbest oh, thing you've ever said. This guy liked the tweet <clears throat> that I disagree with. Blocked. You are the <laughs> yeah. most dramatic person. <laughs> Oh, I have I have no words. If All right, Freddie well, sends out a tweet uh, and no. somebody's a to no. Freddie, I do block them because if he's a to Freddie, he's gonna be on me, and I don't want to read their tweet. <laughs> you block people because they spell something wrong. No, I mean, no. no. If you have been personally blocked by Brett, please use our number to call in and let us know what you think. And why? Why did he block you? Yes. Yeah. We need to know why. Seven zero four eight zero two nine five seven two. Let us know what you think of. Not he, only Brett's it's going to be our record number of calls is. next week. <laughs> it 1,500 is. people calling in next week. Yeah. How many Let's, you got blocked? If, yeah, how oh. many? Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> if you you if, can see it, I think. Okay. TJ I don't know how to, do how to find it. Um, I don't. I don't, <clears throat> I don't if, have to find it. If, if you're listening week. and I have blocked you, I, I'm so glad that you're a listener of the show, but there's a reason why you got blocked. Probably how do I find it? Nothing. The thing is, we want to know. The thing is, we want to know if you know why you got because a lot. Everyone that sends me a message is like, "Brett blocked me." And I don't know why. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Like- <laughs> another another way you can tell us why Brett blocked you is by sending your questions on Twitter using hashtag AskDBC. Not only can you share your thoughts on the race or whatever y'all think about the show, but please, please let us know why Brett blocked you. Do you know how to find it? No, I'm trying. I don't, I don't oh, know. she knows how. Hold on a minute. Here you go. I found, oh, I found no. it. I found it. <clears throat> go to your settings. It's going to be thousands. Like I'm telling you. Uh, settings and support, and then settings and privacy. Uh, it's like muted. Um, which category is this? Muted and blocked. Okay. Might be privacy and safety. Mute and blocked. Uh, fifteen hundred and forty blocked, twenty seven are <laughs> muted. 
2,700 muted? No, no 27 oh, are muted. I didn't even know I <clears throat> muted people. That, I screwed that up. <laughs> so 1,540 blocked accounts. Good gosh, man. That's not that many. Let's unblock somebody. I Just pick it, one at random and unblock okay. them. All right. <laughs> All right. I have 100. <laughs> I don't know. You blocked 100? I, yeah, I have blocked 100. All you right. probably are all TJ sucks. Um, uh, it's all Casey Is there stuff. any good race fans that y'all know their Twitter <laughs> name that has blocked me? Let me see. Uh, just pick out a good name. All right. Track, Track House, House fan, fan Club. Track House Fan Club. Maybe I'm blocked there. we there. go. Okay. Schultz? <laughs> Track House Fan Club. And it's at Fan Track House. All right. I'll leave him. You are our lucky unblocker today. <laughs> we should do this every week. <laughs> Yeah, tell me why I should unblock you. But the problem is this idiot's going to get blocked again. That's what's going to happen because they can't not be a clown. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tweet this guy or girl. Congratulations. Well, you think yeah. this is good mojo for the day it's or ja- something? It's Jason Schultz. It's, it's Jason Schultz. Schultz. <laughs> By the way, I passed Jason twice. Jason's big time now. He doesn't. Oh, we don't. Do, we do not exist to Jason. I run into Jason in the bars nowadays. I don't know. He's, yeah. he's branching out a little yeah. bit. Jason and, and old Neb. Ben Outlaw. Uh, yeah, Jason. I saw him twice at Martinsville, and he just walked on straight by. He's too big now. Let's switch mm-hmm. over to Ask DBC. Don't forget, submit your questions using hashtag Ask DBC. Let us know what you thought of the race. Let us know why Brett blocked you. This first question is from Icy Joe. <laughs> Lot of talk over the weekend on parody, and I want to know if more parody. Who's Perry? Perry. Parody? What, what does he mean by that? Sorry. Oh. Parody. He's right. That's the word, right? That's right. Parody is a word. You said parody. I said parody. You did a second time. The resort. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's f***ing funny. I mean, I can't help but you can't read. I see I can Joe read. asked just, there was lots of talk over the weekend on parody, <laughs> and I want to know if more parody is better for the sport. It's bad when TJ's doing it. <laughs> I just did. It's bad. It's bad with TJ's taking over. And I nailed it the first time. Icy Joe asks, lots of talk about, lots of talk over the weekend on parody. And I want to know if more parody is better for the sport. Casey, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think, Casey? <laughs> what do you think about Perry? She's so pissed right now. What do you think about Perry? Who is Perry? <laughs> Who is Perry? Resort, Resort and Daytona? Wasn't that the guy from Friends and he just died? Yeah. Is that Matthew Parody? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matthew Parody. <laughs> You don't have to edit any of this stuff. This is all great. No, this is, leave the cuss words and everything. Yeah. <laughs> leave all that in there. Good luck. Why? You could have cut out all that's, the good stuff here. That's good. Let's when, go. Like, Answer the question. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, Ice Joe asks. Why, why are you reading the question? Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. Not ask the question. Answer it. Answer it. No. This, this show you don't want to answer laugh. it? Brent, what do you think? More parody, bad, or I'm good for so sport? I'm so hot right now. <laughs> I don't like parody. I think when cars run the same speed, it's called a parade. I want to see comers. I want to see goers. Uh, parody's bad. And oh, by the way, the parody they were after, it ain't here. Joe Gibbs Racing, Hendrick, won in every race. And I, I thought Denny made a really good point on his show last <laughs> week. Uh, that's of, funny. I imagine yeah, that. Believe it or not. <laughs> um, you know, they made the cars the same. Ex- you know, exactly the same. And then they give each other, all the drivers, each other's data. So now you've made the drivers the same. Where you know, yeah, you got plenty of parity, but the problem is now you can't pass each other no. because everybody's the same. So. I think there's too much parity between mine and Colby's car. <laughs> I thought I she thought just, that, I was like, what the hell? Did somebody just, just moved Tacey's car, yeah. moved TJ's car. <laughs> yeah, too much parity between our cars out there. Uh, nah, but I think parity is, I mean, I don't know. It's good for the sport, but when we're all the same, that's that's no good. Like we have to have comers and goers. Oh, that's not. <clears throat> there's ways everything the same, but there's they could have. If this car was similar to the Xfinity car still, you would have, I think it would be much better still. The sport relies more on people than it ever has because the the, the similarities amongst equipment is, is the best it's ever been or the most common it's ever been, and there's no practice. That, that makes it even more reliable on the people before you get to the racetrack. Because once you get to the racetrack, there's not a lot of opportunities to make your car better before you, before you qualify or before you race. So man, it, it just, the, the parts don't break like they used to. And I say that coming off a of power steering problem yesterday, but I mean, leading into yesterday's race, we, everybody was finishing every race. And then obviously yesterday we wrecked, but man, it's, I'm not a fan of all this parody talk. I think the, the thing that I always say about 
you know, we talk about more practice. I think more practice brings more, more parity. Par- in this world, it does. You know, they're just going to get them closer together, and that's going to make it even harder to pass. Do you want to read the next one, too? No, you can try this one. Thanks. <laughs> Chip asks, with Talladega being next, would adding a playoff point for whoever leads the most laps solve the problem of drivers not running full throttle? No. <laughs> yeah, probably not. The, the reason why we're not running full throttle is to put ourselves in position to win the race. <laughs> which is going to be a lot better. Yeah, which is going to pay off a lot more than one playoff point. Um, I mean, I, I don't I don't think do – you, would you run your race completely different for one playoff point? Y'all going to hate me when I tell you all this. I loved when we were in the air that leading a lap got you a point. Um, I love that leading the most laps got you points. So for me, I would love to see us instill a rule to where anybody who leads a lap under any condition on the racetrack, whether it be green or yellow, you get a point. A playoff point or a season point? A point, a season point. Um, Because that season point is going to be a big deal in the playoff points, especially for those top 15, 16 drivers. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're crazy. That's I think it incentivizes lead changes. It incentivizes different pit strategies. Um, if you're running last, if you're if you're the last car on the lead lap yesterday, and the caution comes out, <clears throat> and everybody pits, what would you do? Stay out. <clears throat> I'd stay out. Yeah, probably. Get a point. It gives me a different narrative on the broadcast. Um, I like incentivizing leading laps. If we're sitting at Talladega uh, this coming weekend, and and Justin Haley's running fourth, and he knows he can get a point if he gets the lead, he ain't gonna just ride. But if he doesn't have that incentivized statue in the rules he's gonna just chill i think the you know the problem is this race is gonna i assume be just like the other races where you're saving fuel and you burn more fuel leading <laughs> so you do. so yeah. you know not nobody, all, wants, to nobody lead. wants to lead and you know i guess you, if you incentivize it maybe you see that change but you you honestly can't do it we saw it with jesse love even in the xfinity race at uh daytona you know he led the whole race but didn't save enough fuel, and, and then that, that's what cost him the race at the end. Um, so you, you, you're all gonna, we're all gonna run the race the same way and, and save as much fuel as we can. And I think even if you incentivized it for the playoff point, I, I still don't see anybody really sacrificing their race for that point. If, if you incentivize it with a playoff point, people are gonna go bananas. But I think the playoff point should be incentivized if you lead the most laps. Just that's leading, what this is. That's yeah. what leading saying. a lap. That's what this yeah. question. They're saying yeah. here, leading the most laps at Talladega. But and I think he's just. It's just saying Talladega. No, because, I think it should be all of them. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. They should give out playoff points for leading laps. But. Did y'all hear that sound? <laughs> Sorry. I tried to do it away from the speaker. Oh. This so, next one is from Zachary. How hot is Alex Bowman's seat now that all of his teammates have wins? Does he need to update his resume at this point? Brett. Uh, it's early in the year. There's a lot of uh, regular season races left. Obviously, he he's going to now feel the pressure to win. And I don't know how much he was feeling that pressure, you know, with Chase struggling 42-plus or 42-race winless streak. You know, Alex was leading to points when he had his wreck and he got hurt and he went out. And I think Alex is, is in a great spot from a sponsorship perspective because I don't think they're putting a whole lot of pressure on necessarily, you know, winning, and, and they're obviously tied to Rick's businesses. But, uh, man, he, he's going gonna, he's gonna to start feeling the pressure of I've got to win. And, and I hope he does win because I, I like Alex. I think he's good for a sport. And, oh, man, time, time starts ticking, and you start getting in your own head. And, but I, I, I think the same pressure is, is probably on Ty Gibbs. I mean, he, he's, he needs to win too. And he's young in his career, but – I mean, his name's on the building. He's he's taking, or if he hasn't, he's going to eventually be taking a leadership role with a company. Like, you you got to win in this sport. It's but not what it was years ago. Do you think for Ty, he's also still working on that experience? I mean, it's only been a few years since he's really started in the Cup Series. Yeah, this he, Ty. I feel like Ty's shown more speed. What the car, the cars in general have shown more speed. But uh, yeah, like we talked about it with Alex. You know, there was a gap between the five and the twenty-four to the nine and the forty-eight. Well. The Nines figured out how to close that gap in the last few weeks. Alex wasn't bad at Martinsville. He was, you know, seventh, fifth to seventh most of the race. Obviously, it's good, but when your teammates are up there dominating the race, it's, it's you I know. Th- I think Chase led 60 laps at Martinsville. Yeah. Um, yesterday, he got, I mean, 
I don't know what the hell was going on there. I have to I have to call John Hunter and see. Uh, Alex checks up for the wreck and then starts to spin. And John Hunter starts spinning into him too, though. He wasn't like didn't he like looked he like he was gaining too. speed when he hit him. Yeah, he did look like um, that. I know how that uh, is. Uh, yeah. Um, so, but this unfortunate takes him out yesterday. But I mean, you can't listen. All the the other three cars are in the playoffs, and Alex is only probably like I don't even know, maybe ten points to the good right now, hanging on to that second to last spot in the playoffs. And that so, last spot isn't any good. Suarez is out. Oh, that's that. I'm sorry. I'm counting Suarez yeah. in there, but there's going to be more winners. You know, that you that you're putting yourself in. If you're down there in the last three or four spots, you're putting yourself in bad danger of some guys rattling off a couple plate wins or surprise wins here and there. And and now next thing you know, you're outside looking in. So um, he's. De- I think he'd be the first to tell you that he's not overly you know overly happy with the way things are going. And I, you know, he's a, he's a good race car driver. Um, there's no he wouldn't be where he was if he's not. So uh, he's just got to kind of get it figured out. And and I think he'll be fine. But he's definitely definitely feeling the pressure did he recently re-sign for a few years too though uh they think he signed a contract at the beginning of last year i think i don't know how many years it was but um like brett said ally is essentially the old gmc financial you know that's that's just a you know a product of hendrick partners there so like you said there's not a ton of pressure from them to you know get rid of somebody and honestly you look around like if you fire alex bowman Who who's going in there you know there's there's not some you know, I mean, there's some prospects out there, but I don't know that they're ready to replace Alec Bowman yet. Moving on to what an idiot. Who would like to go first? I don't remember who I had. Well, I was going to give it to something that happened on the broadcast on Saturday, but I'm not. God, I, didn't, I heard a little bit about that. I'm going to let that I, one Listen, slip. and there's a fan. I told Brett this story. There's a fan that I ran into at the dirt race on Saturday night that I could easily give it to, but I'm not going to bring that up. Uh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give what happened a pass, uh, <laughs> which I don't do very often. But I'm feeling nice today. I think there's an overwhelming what an idiot this week, TJ. What do you think? Yeah, I know you spotted that race, the truck race. Yes. Um, <clears throat> which one are we giving it to? The one that came from the third or fourth lane off a of turn two and just drove to the bottom of the racetrack with a bunch of trucks. Oh, coming. that one. <laughs> but I, but I heard his wheel popped off. Did it? If that's true, that's an even bigger one needed award. You didn't have the wheel on it. <laughs> but you also can't yeah. keep ta- your truck up there so if you don't ta- have a steering wheel. About I don't Thad think <clears throat> I don't think you can I, I don't think he can turn the wheel the steering wheel that many times to get the wheels that far crank left in the middle of the corner like that. I, I don't think you can do it. Like those wheels were So you think Thad Moffat's steering wheel came? I don't know. I just know the wheels are pointed way to the left, further than I've ever seen any wheel pointed. They in were the middle of the corner, to the left. like all the way to the left. So yes. that was a what an idiot moment. Regardless, my what my, my other one I had last was Ryan Sieg for not stuffing that kid in the fence. Yeah, when you're a first race. Did y'all see Brian Murphy send me this tweet? Did you see where the two motorcycle guys were? I was just about to. Call and then the motorcycle guy went and got on the wrong motorcycle. <laughs> oh. And then the other guy sprinted like forty yards, and he's like, "Hey, dumb." You're on my bike. Go back and get on your bike. <laughs> that one was an epic moment. I'll, I'll, and then yeah, the safety uh, officials are like trying to get the bike. And yeah, he, it was it was pretty. It was yeah. like a cartoon. That was a, a great honor you mentioned. But my what an idiot. And I, maybe I'm just too damn old school, but I was really bothered by the fact that we didn't have a scoring pylon at Texas Motor Speedway. Like you, yeah, you could look at Big Hoss, but you couldn't see one through thirty-five. You didn't see the lap count easily until you. Yeah. Like, I, 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 and listen, I'm 25 years trained to look for that scoring pylon going into one when I want to know what lap it is and what position I'm in and who's around me, and that was gone. And we not went from just, two pylons to none. Yeah. And we I went, love yeah. that pylon because it was one of the only ones. Which you might have even said that, but yeah. it, no, it counted. It. it counted both ways. Both you know, it ways, counted up yeah. and down, so you knew exactly how many to go. It's there like was. Charlotte. Charlotte yeah, has the Charlotte same, has same thing. one. I, the the worst to me is both I did didn't do the Xfinity race, but the truck the uh, Bailey said he used the pylon because he could look for laps. Not hundred percent. And Brad said the same thing. He's like, "Hey man, make sure you tell me more about where we're running, and how many laps to go." Because normally I would just look at the pylon and I can't see. I tell you, I, I couldn't I, see early in the truck race either because the lights weren't on in turn three. <laughs> that wasn't good. Boy, Denny looked like a genius with them comments. I I though. When I think about Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I can't tell you how many times I've taken a picture of that scoring pylon. If my guy was on the pole, if we won the race, if whatever, 
And, and, and so, I mean, to me, pylons are a big deal at the racetrack. And then for Texas, I use it as a tool. I know fans use it. Drivers use it. Yeah. It's just gone. I had, I, there, there's a kid, um, actually it was Andy, Jay, um, mm-hmm. Justin Bonsignor did a, he ran the race this year, the Arca race Daytona. And they had like a flow, had a little film crew following him around. And Andy Jay was, he, he ran there for the first time a couple years, did a test. And he said he was going down the front stretch. They got in the draft. They go down the front stretch and he said, I noticed we went to the top of the board. He said, and TJ's trying to talk to me about how to run the draft because TJ spots for him. And he said, all I'm doing is trying to get my PR guy to take a picture of the pylon at Daytona with my number on top of it. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's like, I'm like, hey, get, make sure you get a picture of that. <laughs> I know. He, I, he says I'm going to read. I remember that. Uh, but, yeah. but I'll tell you, who, I'll get another honorable mention for what an idiot. Whoever was in control of Big Haas during practice and played the Michael McDowell wreck to where I thought there was a massive wreck happening while we were out there practicing you know like it's zoom it's so it zoomed in that, yeah. so you're like you're just you know following and then all of a sudden you see like a car pound the face you're like holy shit, where's that at and you literally yeah. you look and realize oh it's mcdowell rolling down the racetrack but it's like i was like really in the moment i was like oh all right never mind that's not a wreck <laughs> moving on to tvc picks congratulations brett um you won Texas. Now, the last driver to win back-to-back races with Dega being the second of the two was Joey Logano in 2015. So it's been nine years. Can Chase Elliott break the streak? Freddie, you DQ'd last week. So sorry for picking the same driver twice. Who are you picking? What an idiot for me. Yeah, shout out uh, Trey Ryan was feeding us some stats last night about that uh, the the back to back wins and Logano. I think he said Jeff Gordon was the last one before that, two thousand seven. So maybe that's a trend. Like it's every eight, every nine, eight, ten nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Uh, and Chase, listen, Chase is gonna be strong. Obviously, the odds are against him. Uh, I am not picking Chase Elliott this week. I'll leave that to you guys. I'm I'm gonna go with Todd Gilliland. Solid pick. TJ. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So I'll pick. I will go with making sure he's still available. Did I take him already? No. I'll go with Kislowski. I'm going with a guy coming off his first top ten of the year. Who's that? Noah. No, Noah finished off in Vegas. Austin Dillon. Oh. Yeah. I think I got the biggest gun, but it's such a wild card race. <laughs> I, I almost feel bad for Austin Dillon because the we were right behind him coming to the white or coming to the checker, I guess. And uh, Ross Rex and Austin lifted for the wreck, obviously. Like, we weren't that close to him where we were going to run into him. But, like, right. he, he obviously lifts for the wreck. And I'm like, keep the up, wreck and top, stay, keep getting in. And we passed him down the back straight away after he the lost wreck. Spot. And he lost the spot. <laughs> Blaney's wreck, we actually passed two cars on the rate as that started happening. And they threw the yellow so fast that he wasn't – he was still backwards. He didn't even hit anything yet. And they threw the yellow, and I would call. I'm like, just wait three seconds here. <laughs> Good Lord. Ford. We got to talk about Ford. Well, that's what I was going to say earlier. You know, the, the Ford winless streak, they're going to a place where they could easily break it because they have been the cars to beat, it feels like. Or the, like the, the teamwork to beat, really, is what I should say. It's hard to win when the Chevys drive through you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this, uh, listen, this might be the, this, just what the doctor ordered for Ford to go here and, and finally break that streak. Who's on the pole? Hendrick? Price. No, Hendrick hasn't no, been qualified. It's probably it's RCR be, will be fast, right? Stuart Haas, probably. Stuart Haas. I think front row. Front probably, row. I think front row would be uh, really good. Joey, does Joey have his gloves still? Or the, I don't know. You know oh, the secret gloves. <laughs> yeah. they, they come out with a better design. Uh, yeah, the front row car has been fast. That's, no yeah, practice it's, I think it's going right. to be a Ford, I think, for sure. No practice. So that's no. Probably accurate. Show up and race. Which, by the way, I seen something the other day, and somebody – TJ, are you doing the Arca race this week? Oh, yeah, man. Did TJ. I see that they are not qualifying? They're just lining the field up by points? No, we're doing it. We have a practice on Friday. Yeah, but – But so, it's like a but, practice but, qualifying but thing, right? The thing that Bob tweeted was like – It might be by points. The top 20 is going to be by points, and then after that, it's Your that practice, practice qualifying deal, which makes yeah. – I'm hoping that's not true because that makes <clears throat> zero f- sense to me. <laughs> so I don't – like, Arca does some wild – we're qualifying. Well, I, I don't understand, like, and I know this don't very matter very much to probably because you like Spot Arca, but um, <laughs> why don't we just qualify? <laughs> just, yes. Like why? And this, <clears throat> so they. You know how? Do you even know how they qualify? I Normally, have, I don't know. You go to Daytona for the first race of the year for them, and you literally, what do you draw for a group? Draw out of a hat for a group, <clears throat> and that's your group. 
you could get the four worst cars out there drawn in your group, and that's your luck. <laughs> I mean, to me, it, it's still it, it should come down to the fastest guys, like whoever puts not not because this guy's been running it for seventy eight years, he's in over you. You know what I mean? Uh, like I, I don't know. They 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 need to go back to regular qualifying, just one lap off pit road, Single run car. one lap. Yeah, and, yeah. You could, and you could stick. Probably three or four of them out there at a time. You know what I mean? You and, could run. You could have, yeah, three. Or what we used to do, we used to do something like six, seven seconds apart or something yeah. like that. Send a car. Yeah. Well, like, they got cars that are six seconds off. <laughs> well, I mean. Do it in, you do it in time. Uh, yeah. I mean, they you don't have do a it. minimum speed, do they? Uh, if they do, I don't know what it is. But it's got to be like a minute 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's got, they've got to do something different. Um, I mean, cup qualifying. And expedient qualifying take no time now at the places. No. I mean, they're rolling. As soon as the car goes by, I stand the next one. Car goes by, I stand the next one. I like the Talladega infield in the spring. Not that the fall's bad, but the spring's usually real wild. Fall, a lot of people in that area big college football fans, so it's not as wild. Uh, but you boys, y'all stay off the infield this week. I think I'm going to go to the infield this week, maybe. Are you? I think old Is Duggar, Duggar playing? Duggar's playing. Might go down there and see him for a little bit on Saturday night. I think I forget. He needs to play what's, on like Friday night. What's the Apple, Texas? What's the Applebee's song guy's name? That's, Walker Hayes. Well, he's the uh, Mike he's Harmon the show. I think Duggar's opening for him. I heard Mike that, that Walker Hayes is blown up, hasn't he? Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, like Applebee's. On I think the that was night. three years ago. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Think he that still was. is. I know. I took my girls to Applebee's when that song come out. Because when where I grew up, Monroe, North Carolina, that's all we had to eat was Applebee's. Like if you were going on a date, you went Applebee's. <laughs> I took my kids to Applebee's. Mm. There's three restaurants in the whole state of uh, or the city of Pageland. I thrive, you drive by every one of them. Two of them are local. There's definitely not Applebee's. <laughs> Applebee's, Subway, and probably you got a you Bojangles, know. a Hardee's, and a and a McDonald's. I think there's, there's a Subway. Well, <laughs> we didn't too. have that growing up. We had a Grits and Groceries. That was the name of it. <laughs> grits and Groceries. All yeah. right, where the oh Talladega, yeah, watermelon capital of the world. Grits oh. and Groceries. Can't believe Byron wrecked the watermelon, man. What a I, know. I tell you, man. Ross's fandoms, man. I saw a guy literally wearing a watermelon hat yesterday. It's uh, he's blowing he's up. He's the working man. All right. Well, we're uh, I guess Casey, you ready to cut out of here? You, you got somewhere to be? She's hungry? No, she I'm hungry. all good. I'm all good. I'm trying to figure out what they want for lunch. So, <laughs> yep. We got to take Casey to Big Al's. Her Never her husband been. won't take her. We got to do okay. the DBC picks dinner still. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I thought mean, that damn. was Reddick. I thought we were waiting on Reddick. Uh, Come on, okay. Tyler. Make it happen. Oh, get on. I, your, I, get I've been waiting for. You told me we're waiting on Reddick. No, I didn't say that. Waiting on the scooter. You said it multiple times. Well, Reddick. Tell us when you're free. Epic's open, uh, so we can go there again. Well, I hope y'all have a good week. Talladega, it'll be wild one way or another. See you guys sure there. sure to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, not only Dirty Mo Media, but also the Door Ripper Clear channel. Tons of cool content. Plenty more to see this week. Thank y'all for listening. Have a great week. We out. Holla. See ya. <laughs>